Hello, and welcome to the System State Manager Resource Relationship Trees video for the mainframe team center automation component of CA Ops MVS. My name is Phil Strohecker, and I am part of the Ops MVS development team. Mainframe Team Center Automation, or MTCA for short, is a component of CA Ops MVS that allows you to visualize your mainframe automation environment from a single modern user interface. In this video, we will be discussing a new feature added to this component called System State Manager Resource Relationship Trees. Today's agenda will feature an overview of this new feature, the prerequisites required for its use, a detailed description of how this new feature can be used to gain insights into your automation strategy, and a summary section to sum up the benefits provided by this new feature. In this section, we will discuss the reasons why this feature was created and how this new feature addresses the identified business needs. The System State Manager component of Ops MVS provides the facility to automate and control the management of mainframe system resources, such as started tasks, subsystems, JES initiators, VTAM nodes, and peripheral devices. System State Manager, or SSM for short, allows you to define a resource entry in a managed table, known as an RDF table, that represents one of these types of elements. SSM will then monitor the state of all defined resources to ensure that the current state of the resource matches its desired state. The SSM resource relationship tree feature provides additional visibility into how all of your SSM resources relate to one another. Some of your system resources may require that other system resources be made available before they themselves can become available. In SSM terminology, this dependency is enforced by making one SSM resource a prerequisite for another SSM resource. Each SSM resource can require multiple prerequisites, and each prerequisite resource can itself require multiple prerequisites. This can make it difficult for operations staff to quickly decipher the correct order in which SSM resources should be started and stopped. It can also make it difficult to determine which SSM resources will be impacted if a certain SSM resource needs to be started or stopped. This is the problem that the SSM resource relationship tree feature is designed to address. To provide visibility into how SSM resources are related to one another during either their startup or shutdown processes, Two new sections have been added to the MTCA user interface to show SSM resource relationship graphs. The first graph, called the Task Startup Graph, shows the relationships between the selected SSM resource and any other resource for which the selected resource has a dependency, either direct or indirect. The second graph, called the Task Shutdown Graph, shows the relationships between the selected resource and any other resource that depends on the selected resource, again, either directly or indirectly. The shutdown graph shows those resources that will be impacted if the currently selected resource is shut down. The next section will discuss what needs to be done before you can start using the SSM Resource Relationship Trees feature. The CA Common Services Message Service Server component, the component that allows MTCA to talk to other instances of Ops MVS, must be upgraded on all of your LPARs that have instances of Ops MVS. If you are running version 15 of CA Common Services on a particular LPAR, you must first install the SO14880 PTF on that LPAR to get the required changes. In addition, each Ops MVS instance that participates with MTCA must be upgraded to release 14, followed by applying PTF SO14857, which contains the SSM Resource Relationship Trees feature.
The first part of this feature we'll discuss is the SSM task startup tree. This resource relationship tree is available for viewing on the SSM resource detail page in a tab called SSM task startup. The goal of this feature is to create a graphical representation of the different SSM resources that interact with one another when SSM wants to start a specific resource. SSM allows you to specify a list of prerequisite resources that must first be in a certain state before the referencing resource can start. These prerequisite resources themselves can have their own prerequisite resources, which also must be in a certain state before their referencing resources can start. MTCA analyzes these prerequisite chains and builds a graph to show the relationships between the resources that are part of the selected resources prerequisite chain. Each node in the graph represents a resource, and each resource is connected to its prerequisite resources by lines, also known as edges. Each node entry will show the current and desired states of the associated resource, along with a marker stating whether the current state of the associated resource will allow its referencing resource to start. The graph is drawn from the bottom up, with the lowest node being the selected resource. We can call this level zero of the graph. Level one of the graph will show all of the resources that are listed in the prerequisite list of the selected resources. These resources are called direct prerequisites since they are specified directly in the resources prerequisite list. Levels two and above consist of indirect prerequisites since these resources are listed as prerequisites of prerequisites. For example, if a resource called CICS defines a single prerequisite resource of TSO, and the TSO resource defines a single prerequisite resource of JES2, then TSO is a direct prerequisite of CICS, and JES2 is an indirect prerequisite of CICS. If the CICS resource is selected for viewing, the CICS node will be shown at level 0, the TSO node will be shown at level 1, and the JES2 node will be shown at level 2. This slide shows the SSM task startup tree for the example I just described. In this case, I selected the CICS resource from the SSM resource accordion and clicked the SSM task startup tab to view the prerequisite tree for this selected resource. As we can see here, the JES2 resource is currently in a state that allows the TSO resource to start, so the header bar is green and the words prerequisite satisfied appear inside the node box. Since the JES2 resource is a direct prerequisite of the TSO resource, an edge line connects both the JES2 node and the TSO node. From the display, we can see that the TSO resource, a direct prerequisite of the CICS resource, is currently down. To indicate that the TSO resource is not in a proper state to allow the CICS resource to start, the TSO node has a red header bar and does not contain the prerequisite satisfied text. Since at least one of the direct prerequisites of the CICS resource is not in a proper state, the CICS node will also display a red header bar and no prerequisite satisfied text. To allow for better monitoring of changing conditions, a graph only refresh button has been added in the upper right corner of the graph area. This dedicated refresh button will only refresh the data required to draw the selected relationship tree, making it faster than the page level refresh located at the top right corner of the web page. You can also use this graph only refresh to reset the graph to its original state after either moving or resizing the graph. This slide shows a more complicated example with multiple levels of indirect prerequisite resources. The UX task three resource has a single direct prerequisite, which happens to be the special MINOV statement. 
A dotted line denotes the resources that comprise the minnow statement, and the text two of three above this dotted line signifies that at least two of the encircled resources must be in their proper states for the entire minnow statement to be satisfied. In this case, only one of the resources contained within the minnow statement is in its proper state, so the minnow statement will prevent the UX task three resource from starting. You can zoom in or out using your mouse wheel, and the entire graph can be repositioned by performing a click and drag operation. The second part of this feature we will discuss is the SSM task shutdown tree. This resource relationship tree is available for viewing on the SSM resource detail page in a tab called SSM task shutdown. In order for a selected resource to stop instead of start, all other resources that depend upon the selected resource must first be stopped. These dependent resources are known as subrequisite resources. In a similar fashion to how prerequisite resources can themselves have prerequisite resources, subrequisite resources can have dependent resources that must first be stopped before they can shut down. This subrequisite resource chain is the basis for the SSM task shutdown tree diagram. Unlike prerequisite relationships, Subrequisite relationships between resources are not defined directly using a subrequisite list assigned to each resource. Instead, subrequisite relationships are inferred based upon the defined prerequisite relationships in combination with SSM global or resource specific settings. In the previous prerequisite section, we provided an example stating how an SSM resource called CICS depends upon another SSM resource called TSO. The definition of this dependency is accomplished by adding the name of this dependency, in this case TSO, to the prerequisite list of the dependent resource, which in this case is CICS. Since the TSO resource is defined to be a prerequisite of the CICS resource, this implies that the CICS resource requires the TSO resource to be running in order to operate normally. To ensure that the CICS resource is not left in an inoperable state, SSM will check to make sure that the CICS resource is shut down before allowing the TSO resource to be shut down. Each node displayed in the SSM task shutdown tree diagram will contain summary information about both the SSM resource the node represents and how the state of this SSM subrequisite resource impacts the ability of the dependent resource to stop. In this case, we've selected to view the JES2 resource from the SSM resource accordion and clicked the SSM task shutdown tab to view the subrequisite relationship tree for this resource. If we wanted to shut down the JES2 resource, the diagram shown here tells us that we must first shut down the CICS resource followed by shutting down the TSO resource before the JES2 resource can be stopped. If the DB2 resource had been running at the time this screenshot was taken, this resource would also need to be stopped before stopping the JES2 resource. This section contains the same convenience controls as the SSM task startup tab, such as using the mouse wheel to zoom the graph, click and drag to reposition the graph, and a dedicated refresh button. In this video, we discussed the SSM resource relationship trees feature, which includes two different graph sections that help show the relationships between SSM resources. The SSM task startup graph shows the relationships between a selected resource and those resources on which the selected resource depends. This allows the operation staff to see which resources need to be in their proper states in order for the selected resource to start. The SSM task shutdown graph shows the relationships between a selected resource and any other resource that depends upon the selected resource. These dependent resources must each be in a state that allows the referencing resource to shut down before the selected resource itself can shut down. 
For more detailed information about this product, go to the following URL for the product page. From the product page, you can access the following, product documentation, support, communities, and learning paths.